I think that they could do different annual events instead of like most theme parks are like, okay, we have a new roller coaster this year. They're not necessarily going to tell you that at this park because they want to be a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more whimsical. They're just like every year there's a new kind of uh, event going on, like a new campaign basically where maybe all of a sudden there are zombies across the whole park or um, there's just some new threat that's there. So you return and maybe it's the same the same pathways you've taken before, but different things are happening. You know, the, the like lighting effects and the sound effects are different and uh, different animatronics are chasing you around. And you know how well that would do if they like just made a ride, didn't tell anybody about it yeah. or like when it was opening and you just have to go and experience it. Wouldn't that be yourself. crazy? That'd be so unusual. Like, especially with like the social media thing where the press release basically comes from people who are like, um, I was, you know, I was <laughs> like in this underground cavern uh, at like the very end. And then I turned left and we climbed up this ladder and there was a new roller coaster there. And everyone's like, oh, I've been up that ladder before. There wasn't a roller coaster. <laughs> like you have to like get very specific, but there's not like published maps about this thing. So like people would have to like cobble their own maps together and like share that experience word of mouth. I think it might do really well as far as the publicity for it. Where it's like, there's, yeah, there's a theme park where they don't tell you what they have to offer. You just kind of have to go find it. And half the stuff's underground, so good luck. That sounds great. Oh, man, I wish this existed. It does <laughs> sound super fun. <laughs> Um, let's see, what other parts of theme parks do we need here? Hmm. Well, restaurants, obviously. So restaurants, I'm picturing like Renaissance Fair type of things or like a lot of taverns with, you know, really old worn tables and like lanterns and that kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be the best thing. It's just like the the problem I see is the like the diversity of the food. Mm-hmm. I mean Every D and D campaign, everybody's eating like a pork shank, but that's right. gonna get old after. That a while. is gonna get old, definitely. Maybe I want like a like a fantasy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and we could we could uh, arrange the park to be you know there's like different villages, um, in, like inhabited by large populations of certain races at each one, and like okay. their maybe their type of cuisine is what's what's available in that part of the park, and they use different combinations of spices. They could get really crazy if they wanted to. I can imagine fantasy food just being either really good or really awful. Right, which is hard to do from a like theme park like customer service standpoint. They're like, okay, I got here, I got separated from my party, the food was horrible, um, <laughs> like, I had to make friends with strangers, and uh, I still got killed at the end. I got killed at the end. It was the best time of my life. I'm coming back yeah. tomorrow, five out of five. I See, I think that's what's going to happen. I think it's a little bit like... Um, when you challenge people to a certain extent, they start to like it. They're like, oh, yeah, this is actually really thrilling because I don't usually live like this, you know? Um, that sounds cool. Okay, so, wait, what are we talking about? There was restaurants. Oh, yeah, what about yeah. stores? Are there going to be shops at this place? Like, I mean, I, I'm picturing, like, shops, like a general store kind of thing where you can buy, like, you know, rope and, like, lanterns and whatever. But should we have I was souvenirs? Thinking... My favorite thing to include in all my D&D campaigns is a thing oh. called, like, a goblin market. Yeah. Where, like, all these goblins sell, like, just trinkets that don't seem like they're valuable. Uh-huh. And there's, like, all these carts and, like, shacks, like, just set up haphazardly. Oh, that sounds awesome. So that would be really cool if, like, one area was just, like, a whole marketplace. Just, like, food carts and, like, just shopping. Yeah. And it'd be really cool if it, to make it feel more like a, like a kind of shanty, like, bazaar kind of thing where... Maybe they have um, this specific figurine, but there's only one of them at, at out on the stand. And so, like, yeah. wow, there's only one of these. Like, I want to buy this. This is really cool. And maybe, you know, they've got a bunch in the back, like, hidden somewhere. They'll just bring another one out after you buy that one. But instead of seeing a hundred of the same item, there's only one in the whole bazaar. You're like, oh, I, I have to get this. This is awesome. And that makes you feel special as, like, a person going to this place. Right. I, like, just the idea of, like, me, I'm only, I am the only one that has this. Yeah. How cool is that? Even if you're totally being lied to, but you buy that experience. <laughs> like, in the moment, you're like, yes, this this is real. And it's totally fine. Like, once you leave, you're like, oh, you know what? They probably had more of those. Like, I know one of my friends has this. But when you're in the moment, that's what's important. It's important to capture the amusement for that one day and make it as, like, 
magical as possible and, and engrossing as possible. That sounds awesome. Just like, and also like, there has to be bars. There yeah. Has to oh be yeah. Bars. Lots of alcohol and picturing. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Just like mead and just Dorvin beer somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. There have to be like some like grizzled looking warrior off in the corner of the uh-huh. tavern willing to like tell his stories. Yeah. And it'd be really cool if that, those are, you know, half the people in that tavern are employees who are just yeah. like in full makeup. Um, and their job for the day, like their eight hour shift is they hang out in this tavern until someone talks to them. And then, you know, maybe they go on an adventure with that person and they're kind of like their guy. You know, it'd be cool day. though. Yeah. What's that? If like you go alone and you have to like hire people to oh, like cool. come adventure with you. Yeah. That's a great idea. That'd be a great job too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Um, another thing I was thinking about uh, is, you know, how a lot of places have like in park currency, like you'll, you'll load money onto your, uh, whatever those like Disney band things are called, the magic bands. So you don't have to worry about carrying a credit card around with you. You just have a preset amount of money or you can give your kid that mo- amount of money or whatever. It'd yeah. be cool if you had like gold coins, like you exchange like your US dollars for like these big old gold coins that you can use only within the park. And maybe for completing certain quests, you get rewarded with those gold coins you can go buy your fantasy pizza with. I'm always looking for things to kind of spark my imagination and being immersed in a, a lore and a world definitely does that a lot more than being on a roller coaster. I think that's why um, escape rooms are really popular nowadays. Yes, I love those. Because it's just being like immersed in a world. Yeah. And those are, are very like intellectually stimulating because you have to figure out all these puzzles and you have to work with people around you and you have to think of, you know, what what other clues have you found before? And you have to remember the story you read at the beginning. And escape rooms are my favorite. I really I'm interested in uh, in making one of those someday. It seems like a super cool thing. If you haven't been to an escape room, you gotta try it. That's my advice to everyone. It's <laughs> they're so sweet. Um, what should we call this land? I know there are specific names for specific you know parts of the Dungeons and Dragons world, but what should we call the theme park? Oh man, that that's really hard. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, if I if I was to do it, I would probably call it Greyhawk, which yeah. is the the setting of the the very first setting right. of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't really convey the name, but like it would be like like an homage to uh, Gary Gygax, who like who made the yeah like invented this thing. The name like Forgotten Realms is a really legit names and it sounds like a, a theme park oh you know what it does i mean oh man, yeah but then but then again wait i saw another one here um i'm looking through a list of like all the different settings from D because i've i haven't played campaigns in every single setting but um i played campaigns in a lot of them really like ravenloft is a the horror theme mm-hmm. um they all they all have their own special themes right i mean They're... forgotten realms is the main one that's mm-hmm. what they're putting all their money into. Right. So, and that, yeah, that sounds like a good name. It does. And it could include the other, other, you know, worlds, the other parts of the D and D lore could be located within that. All right, Peter, what else should we add, man? I don't know. Um, I'm feeling pretty yes. good about this so far. I don't, I think that, um, being able to abandon a lot of the like traditional theme park things of, of having like carnival games and like uh, costumed mascot characters walking around yeah. and stuff would be kind of make it more immersive. It maybe doesn't feel like as much of a theme park, but it feels more like its own thing. It feels more like a Dungeons and Dragons experience. As yeah, only... I feel like yeah, I feel like if it's more of the same, it mm-hmm. won't be as popular what it is, and it won't live up to the potential of D and D. This is something I would love to have in my backyard so I can go to all the time. <laughs> yeah, and I do think that it would attract a local audience a lot who really want to like, you know, level up their character and explore the whole the whole realm, you know, figure out every part of of the whole park. I think that's It would really have cool to idea. be somewhere cold. It would have Ooh. to be somewhere. Yeah. Or at least not 
hot every day yeah and there's no seasons like florida right if it if it wasn't a colder area that would uh lend itself to dressing up more in a you know kind of fantasy type clothes whether they have like a little you know costume shop where like you can rent an outfit based on your class or whatever it'd be kind of cool to be able to get into the larping type experience more where you are wearing the clothes that your character would wear instead yeah. of just wearing a coat because it's cold out or a tank top because it would... it's hot out it would sell so many capes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's It's like true. everybody wears a cape. Uh-huh. I feel like they need to have all the, like, uh, shops that a Renaissance Fair would have, like, where they've got someone who just makes stuff out of leather, and then they've got, yeah. you know, maybe not a blacksmith, because then people will want to use their, like, actual weapons on your animatronics, but, you know, a foam uh, <laughs> blacksmith, a foam smith. Making a foam smith. <laughs> no, that's what, that is what they're called. Oh, really? <laughs> they're called foam smith, yeah. That's awesome. I I know a bunch of them <laughs> from my LARPing days. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Cool, man. Well, thank you very much for uh, helping to build this park with me. It sounds like a, a good time for sure. Well, uh, is there anything that you would like to uh, have our audience do? I mean, they definitely should check out your podcast. Is it called Peter versus Peter or just Peter versus? Oh, it's Peter versus Peter. Uh-huh. But like typing that out for yeah. like everything is so hard. So like, <laughs> Um, like you could go on Spotify, iTunes and Stitcher. It's mm-hmm. Peter versus Peter. And then on social media, it's Peter versus. So we're on Twitter and Facebook. But I would definitely recommend your podcast. It's, it's at certain points in your life. You don't have that many friends around who talk about video games and board games with. So it's nice to have a podcast that can kind of do that with you. You know what I mean? As you know what? I, I get a lot of emails about the same thing. Like cool. People would email me and they're like, this, I like listening to it cause it's like, me talking to my friends but i can't actually say anything right <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> that is it, it's like a modern like lonely version of of you know having friends to talk to about stuff like that all the time yeah yeah, yeah that's you know a side effect of growing up though i guess <laughs> yeah, i know right <laughs> cool man um yeah well thank you so much for your time uh no this was great all right thank you folks for listening uh, shout out to my friend Harold, who uh, we recorded an, an Indiana Jones episode, but just due to low audio quality, I had to, to destroy it. It was pretty sad. Um, but yeah, I will have him on for a future episode. Thanks to my guest, Peter, for this episode. And uh, the next one will be coming out January 9th, and it is on the topic of Scooby-Doo. It's also uh, the co-host on that episode is the host of another one of my favorite podcasts. So I'm really pumped about that episode coming out. Remember to join the conversation on Facebook and on Reddit. Uh, Look forward to seeing you guys out there. And have a happy holidays. Bye.